In today's video, I am serving you flowers on flowers on flowers because we are getting into some more loose watercolor florals. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Shada. You probably already know that though. And I am all about encouraging the artist in everyone, no matter your skill level, you can do this. We're gonna talk it through. Today I'm using hot pressed paper. It's arches, it's 140 pound. It's on a block, which means it's stretched, um, but cold pressed is good too. Then I have my pointed round brush. Number three comes to a really nice fine point when it's wet. And then for paints, I am using my Munio 48 pan watercolor set. Um, I love this. It's a great quality for price. There's a palette in the lid, so it's all self-contained. I have two glasses of clean water, paper towel for blotting, and uh, yeah, let's start by mixing up some of our paints. So I really want to take a second and think about my colors ahead of time. The difference between a good painting and a great painting is really that color palette. So think it through, plan it out. I love peaches and pinks, so the first color I'm going to start with is just going to be a nice pink. I began with red, added lots of water to it. Now I'm grabbing a little bit of this peach. So what I do is I scrub those cakes of paint with my wet brush. I'm scrubbing the white pan now, and then I bring the pigment over to the palette, and that way I can mix different colors together, mix in more water. Next, I know I want a more peachy pink, so I'm starting with orange mixed with water, and then I'm adding a little bit of red and pink to it so that it's not too orange. And really mixing on the palette allows you to get thoughtful and get colors that are your own. It doesn't have to be taken directly from the set of paints. You can mix some really beautiful colors together, and don't worry if you don't get it right. You know, you can think about it and just play and experiment. And it's also helpful when you are playing and experimenting to have a little bit of scrap paper on hand so that you can test your colors. I'm testing out my different shades of peach and pink. They all kind of flow. They're all a little different, which is good. Right away, I can see that my peach is just a little too orangey, so I'll mix in a little bit of extra pink, a little extra white, maybe some more water. And I'm really just making sure that the colors look the way I want them to. It's all about the nuance when it comes to color. I'm mixing up some brown. I like to add purple to my brown. I just like the way purple cuts through the yellow and darkens it. I also know that I want to anchor this floral piece with a rich burgundy, so I've mixed pink and red together, or really dark pink and red. And then I want a little bit of yellow. Now, I tend to use these three yellows here. They're sort of ochre tones. If I move the palette, you can see I've got some lemon yellow down in the corner. I tend not to use the lemony yellows as often as as I do these three here. So that's just my choice. I'll mix in a little white and lots of water so that I have this very buttery baby yellow. Okay, and then I'm kind of gonna speed through the rest of my mixing because it is a lot of mixing colors when you're trying to decide on your color palette ahead of time. I knew that I wanted sort of a purpley blue, so I'm mixing blue and purple with a little bit of French gray, and that's giving me this nice kind of light, milky periwinkle color. And then in addition to the rich burgundy, I want another dark color to ground the piece and add contrast. So I'm mixing navy and purple together. It gives me this almost like indigo purple. And then I'll finish this by mixing a little bit of green, but I'll probably revisit mixing green as I move through the piece. With our color palette done, it's time to start painting. These flowers are going to be loose and free, so we're just gonna jump right in. I'm using that brown to make a stamen. It's basically a circle of dots. And then with a wet brush, I'm just kind of mucking them up a bit and blending them so it looks really free and loose. And then I'm grabbing my nice peachy pink and we are going to use this round brush and just drag the belly of the brush across the page in order to make these large splotches of color. And we're going to uh, paint five 
petals. They can all be a little different. They can all be a little weird. They're sort of going off in every direction. They do not have to be the same size. And you'll notice I leave little bits of negative space and I just find that acts as like a highlight, a little detail. It helps to keep the painting from looking flat. And then I added just a hint more brown kind of around the stamen just to give that nice messy loose look. Now while that is still wet, this is another thing about having the colors mixed up ahead of time. I am grabbing that burgundy and I've sort of butted the two petals right up against one another so they can bleed and blend just a little bit. And again, I am doing five petals. This time I chose to leave the stamen till later. So I'm just leaving a nice area of negative space in the middle and uh, very messy free petals. The thing with loose florals is it's all about just creating shapes that kind of look like flowers, but it doesn't have to be too precise. Now here I'm using a really light gray and I am just doing a smaller five petal flower. <laughs> I want them all to blend and bleed, but you saw there too much burgundy paint starts to get into my little white flower. So what I did is I just blot my brush so it's dry and then I use that dryer brush to sop up some of the uh, excess color. You're gonna see me do the same thing here, so we'll go over it again. There's too much paint there. I quickly blot my brush and then I just kind of stop the color. <laughs> and I don't mind that it's bleeding a little bit. That's the, the loose look that I want. So now now that I've started with um, two large flowers and two smaller flowers, I want to do some more vertical flowers. So I'm kind of hinting at the idea of lilacs with this very light purple that I mixed up. And um, I'm just kind of making little splotches. I'm using the tip of my brush to just do these really loose little ovals and just random areas of color. That's the thing about loose florals. You don't have to paint a flower to paint flowers. This is so random and free. Now I'm just using the very tip of my round brush to put a little bit of green throughout these two flowers here. And it just gives the look of stems and leaves. It's just hinting at stems and leaves. I'll add a little bit more blue, a little more periwinkle. Uh, my color palette has changed slightly since I mixed up my initial color. Colors, I decided to add that light, light gray and uh, add a little bit of light purple. So, you know, it, it, the piece always comes together very organically for me. Even with some planning, I tend to make changes as I go. And so there we have some more loose florals. Now what I want to do, these uh, white flowers are drying. So I'm using a almost black brown to just add some little lines and dots, very loose, messy lines and dots to indicate the stamen at the center of the flower. I think painting loose florals is such a great way to get into watercolor because you may be watching this thinking, oh, that looks perfect. You may not be, <laughs> but it's really not. Some of these, I was just slapping paint on the page and just making a bit of a mess, quite frankly. We make these colorful brush strokes sort of hinting at flowers and then we go ahead and add those leaves and it all kind of comes together. You want to definitely have your color mixed up ahead of time because I think the best thing about these loose florals is when the colors will bleed and blend a little bit. Like you can see here by adding the green leaves right after I did the little yellow flowers, I'm getting just a hint of green and yellow blending together. And for these leaves, I just drag that brush across the page and one or two brush strokes and I just see what shape emerges and I don't go back and change it or fix it. It. You just want to leave these things alone. Next up, we're going to paint a very loose rose together. I'm starting with that buttery yellow. With the very tip of my brush, I'm painting this broken spiral, um, this messy bunch of circles. Then I grab a bit of peach and I continue that broken spiral. I'll get in close here so you can see, but I just keep going around as if I'm trying to paint a circle, but I can't quite fill it in completely. So there's all these little bits of negative space, these little white lines, and those 
Bits of negative space kind of give the idea of layers and layers of petals, but it's quite messy and it's, I would say, quite easy to paint. I'm picking up different shades of peach, so some bits are lighter, some are darker, and the blend of peach and yellow I think is really lovely. Now I'm going to go back for my periwinkle and we're going to do um, this sort of flowing flower that I always um, equate it or compare it to a school of fish. You want to just paint a bunch of these random brush strokes kind of clustered together at random and then using just a little bit of green paint you join them all with these delicate stems. And I'll continue to add my little periwinkle blobs <laughs> and these thin green leaves. And every time you're painting a flower, think about changing the shape of the leaf slightly. You can see for this uh, small flower, the leaves are small and um, just that little bit of difference and contrast can add so much interest to your piece. Now I'm going to continue sort of moving around my floral piece, adding, I'm adding some smaller yellow flowers. Um, I'm going to add a few more leaves and little stems, but the piece is coming together quite quickly and um, I'll, as things dry, I'll add details like a stamen with my nice dark brown. Again, just dots and lines. It's so messy. I'm really not overthinking it. And that's saying a lot for me because I love to overthink things. <laughs> but for the loose flowers, I really just try to paint without worrying about it. Let's grab some green. If your green um, is too bright, mix a little red into it. It'll give you that really nice natural green. And then I am just dragging that brush across the page. We do one or two brush strokes and it forms the shape of a leaf. And then just leave it alone. It's a leaf. If you say it's a leaf, it doesn't have to look perfect. These florals are organic and free and they're all about that perfectly imperfect style. What I pretty much just want to do now is go around my floral painting and add leaves. So I kind of want um, there to be a burst of leafy green all around the perimeter. Not, I don't want to enclose them entirely. That would probably look a bit heavy and weird, but I definitely want green all around. So some leaves are smaller, some leaves are larger. I find it easiest to paint leaves when I'm pulling the brush towards my body. So that's why you see me kind of moving the painting around. Um, but yeah, it comes together pretty simply. When you're painting loose florals, just turn your mind off and just let yourself go and enjoy the process of painting. With the leaves done, at this point, my painting is kind of finished. So now what I wanna do is add a little extra contrast. So you see me taking a really dark green and just putting some messy bits on some of the leaves. Sometimes I just paint a thin line. Other times I'll shade the top of the leaf or the top and bottom or just the bottom. You know, I'm basically, again, not overthinking it, just putting a dark bit on the leaves for that contrast. Speaking of contrast, I'm also going to add that nice dark indigo purple that we mixed and I am painting some little berries. So that's kind of nice. Berries are also, typically I paint them small so it also adds a nice size contrast to the piece and these ones are really dark and that rich color. I put a few at the bottom, then I flip the painting upside down and painted a few more at the top. Um, and yeah, in terms of contrast, I'm also going to add like a bit of a darker yellow, just slightly darker yellow at the center of the rose and maybe on a few of the other flowers. I'll finally finish the stamen on that burgundy flower. So that allows you to see you can start with the stamen or you can end with it, whatever you're comfortable with. And then I just felt like I needed a little more height in this one corner. So I'm adding a bit more to the lilac. And and then just taking the very tip of my brush with some green on it and adding like some tiny little hints of green kind of in between some of the flowers so that I don't just have white page showing through. But that's pretty much it. An extra leaf or two where I need one and I am all done. 
I hope you'll give these loose florals a try. They really are so much fun to paint and the more you let go and just enjoy the paints and the color and the brush strokes, the more successful you'll be. If this video moved too fast for you and you would like to see a real-time watercolor flowers and leaves tutorial, I have that video on the channel. It's just released last week and I'll link it in the video description. Hit that subscribe button, please. You'll always know when there are new videos every Tuesday and Friday and I will see you soon with a new tutorial.